composer who was widely known for his flamboyantly exuberant composition, Antonio Vivaldi, has greatly influenced top composers like Johann Sebastian Bach and left a significant mark in the music world. Antonio Vivaldi was born on the 4th of March, 1678, in Venice, the capital of the Venetian Republic at the time. He had five siblings and was born with a medical condition similar to asthma. Vivaldi's life was filled with many interesting events, one of which was surrounding the event of his baptism as a child. After his birth, he was meant to be taken to the priest for baptism, a common event for children born into a Catholic home. But this wasn't the case for Vivaldi. Instead, he was baptized by the midwife that helped deliver. There are many speculations about why this happened. Some say an earthquake happened on his birthday, Others say his mother might have had him dedicated to the priesthood. Regardless of the case, Vivaldi would grow up to be one of the most renowned music composers the world has ever seen. Vivaldi's father, Giovanni Battista, taught him how to play the violin. His father was a barber who decided to become a professional violinist and was a member of an association of musicians. Despite his medical condition, Vivaldi learned a lot from his father. He was a fast learner and soon began composing at a young age. Vivaldi was not only interested in music, he was also interested in serving God. And in 1693, when he was 15 years old, he studied to be a priest. He studied until he was 25 years old and was ordained as a priest in 1703. Vivaldi and his family members had red hair, and by the time he became a priest, he was called the Red Priest, which in his language was called Il Prete Rosso. Vivaldi was dedicated to his priesthood as much as he was dedicated to composing music. Many people couldn't understand how he managed it. It was a trait many admired. Much of Vivaldi's life was invested in having successful music. Navigating his path to success was really much of a challenge. There were times things didn't seem to move fine, and other times he seemed to be on the path to becoming one of the greatest composers the world has ever seen. No doubt Vivaldi's skills as a violinist stood out. People like Johann Frederick called him a composer and violinist. He confessed that none could match Vivaldi's excellence when it came to playing the violin. This was proven when Vivaldi became Maestro di Violino, which meant Master of the Violin, in September 1703 at the orphanage home called Pio Ospedale della Pietà, meaning Devout Hospital of Mercy. Soon after, he started working there as a music teacher. Vivaldi worked at the orphanage for more than 30 years during this period. He spent most of his time composing some of his major works. Some of the children he taught music stayed back to join Ospedale's orchestra and choir, which Vivaldi was in charge of. Under Vivaldi's guidance, the orphans began to gain lots of recognition far and near. Vivaldi composed cantatas, concertos, and sacred vocal music. He taught the orphans music theory and how to play some instruments. He composed more than 60 pieces, including large-scale chorale works for orchestra, double chorus, and soloists. He also did special compositions during celebrations. Despite Vivaldi's good work with the children, he often was at loggerhead with the board of the orphanage home. They were never on good terms, which caused him to be fired by the board in 1709. After he was fired, Vivaldi became a freelance musician. Still, in 1711, the board realized how important he had been in teaching the children music and composing music for them. They couldn't find someone to replace him and hired him back. By 1716, he was promoted to the position of music director. Vivaldi's life is turning out to be a very interesting one, but just before we continue, now would be a good time to check if you are subscribed to this channel. Hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell if you haven't. Don't forget to like and leave a comment by the end of this video, and let's continue. Vivaldi's career as a composer began to grow. He released the first collection of his work in 1705, published by Giuseppe Sala. He also released 12 sonatas for two violins and basso continuo. 
by 1709, he released more collections of sonatas for violin. But in 1711, he finally made outstanding progress in his career by the release of his collection of 12 concerts for one, two, and four violins with strings, which Estine Roger published in Amsterdam, which he dedicated to Grand Prince Ferdinand of Tuscany, member of royalty who was known to love and sponsor great composers. Vivaldi's Lestra Armonico was a major success. He gained popularity in all of Europe, and by 1714, he released La Stravaganza, which was a collection of concerts for strings and solo violin. In 1714, he composed Norene Fatto Cesare, La Constanza Triufante de Glamori e de Glodi Arsilda, Regina di Ponto, L'Incorazonie di Dario, Tusone, Tito Malio, La Candance, Ossiano Liberi Amici, La Silvia, and Giustino. Vivaldi didn't always have lots of success performing opera. It was also very profitable, and several theaters were looking to outshine the others. It became such a serious competition that they had to look for the best composer. Vivaldi was employed by Garcesi Theatre in Vicenza in 1713, where he had his first opera, the Orlando Finto Pazzo. His opera wasn't very successful, and he soon had to end it. However, Vivaldi's opera, the Incoronazione di Dario and La Constanza Trifante del Giamori e Dagli, Odi, were performed. L'Incorazione di Dario was well received and became so popular. It was edited in 1719 and renamed Artabano Re di Parti. Vivaldi also played for very prestigious people. In 1717, Vivaldi was employed at the Prince Philip of Hesse Darmstadt court. He was given the position of Maestro di Capella, and during his stay there, he composed some operas, including Tito Malio. He worked in Philip of Hesse Darmstadt court for three years, then returned to Venice. However, before he had left Venice, he met singer Anna Tessieri Giro, who became his student and protege. She and her older sister usually went with Vivaldi any time he traveled for a concert. There were speculations that he and Anna had more than a teacher-student relationship. Still, he denied it on several occasions and insisted that their relationship has always remained professional. Vivaldi became a successful composer and received commissions from royalty and the European Commission. He was appointed as French ambassador to Venice in 1725 at the age of 48. He met with Charles VI, who admired his music and gave him the title of knight, a gold medal, and invited him to Vienna. After a while, Vivaldi's fame began to dwindle, and his composition was no longer trendy as it used to be. He soon began to struggle financially and had to sell a large number of his manuscripts at low prices just so he could get enough money to move to Vienna at the request of Charles VI. Before he got to Vienna, he got a place near the Karnstnerdor Theater in preparation for the opera he planned to stage. Still, to the dismay of Vivaldi, Charles VI passed away, leaving him without a steady income and royal protection as promised by Charles VI. This left Vivaldi destitute and poverty-stricken. He became gravely ill with internal infection and died at the age of 63 on the 27th of July, 1741, in a widow's house. He was buried on the 28th of July. His funeral home was done at the St. Stephen's Cathedral and was buried in a simple grave at the burial ground owned by the Public Hospital Fund. As a monument in his name, a memorial plaque was set up at the Hotel Satcher and at the TUN. He also has a Vivaldi star, the Nice Music Mille. Vivaldi was never married and had no children, which is a common practice for Catholic priests. His work were relatively ignored, but in the 20th century it was rediscovered. Sean Riley wrote a radio play about him titled The Angel and the Red Priest commissioned by ABC Radio in 2005 and later performed as a stage play at the Adelaide Festival of the Arts. 
Antonio Vivaldi has definitely entered the history book of great composers and has influenced some composers that came after him. Share with us some of Antonio Vivaldi's compositions if you are familiar with in the comment section. Do you think he made any real impact compared to great composers before and after him? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Remember to hit the subscribe button to keep you subscribed to this channel. Hit the notification button so you don't miss out on any of our interesting videos. Give this video a thumbs up and share as well.